that. It's time for the Game Sports Podcast. It is your host, David McCaig Jr. This episode is sponsored by Flawless Roofing Sure Seal Incorporated. Over 30 years in the biz. Protect your investment. Start from the top. Flawless Roofing Sure Seal Incorporated. Residential, commercial rooftops, does not matter. Located in Sault Ste. Marie and in Thunder Bay. But if you're outside of those regions, you can contact Flawless at flawlessroofing.ca or on Facebook to get your estimate or book them for work today. Now, little fun fact for you that I have learned today that the owner of Flawless Roofing, Shirsey Incorporated, will be retiring. They are still accepting jobs if you want to reach out to them or if you need to protect your investment per se. So reach out to them as quickly as you can to get in to have them come and do your work today before uh, they sail off into retirement and i want to say on behalf of the game sports podcast and 91n congratulations on your retirement and success in your career to those at flawless roofing now the game sports podcast is powered by 91n that's 91 network you can head over to the youtube channel of 91n make sure you hit like follow and subscribe to be well caught up to date on all the content from well the game sports podcast of course but all those that do provide on the platform of 91 and that including bitter rivals podcast the average jocks podcast and so on make sure you check that out today now the game sports podcast is also heard on all audio platforms spotify apple amazon google podbean no matter where you are tuning in as i mentioned with 91 n Do the same for the Game Sports Podcast. Make sure you like, follow, and subscribe. Now, you know who I am, and we got an action-packed show here for you this evening. This is the Monday edition of the Game Sports Podcast. The date of recording is November the 13th, 2023. And in this first segment, it's going to be a little bit sporadic. I'm going to get into two main core topics, though, but I do have a little bit of limited time in this first segment that I usually do because I want to allow a bit more time for the second segment. But in this first segment, I am going to attempt to get into two topics for sure. That is ref consistency, consistency, rather easy for me to say, in the National Hockey League. And then I'm going to get into the extra innings rule with the MLB. If I have time, I'm going to try to transition some basketball thoughts uh, that I have, as well as some thoughts around a little bit of hockey as well, as that will transition us into the top shelf segment. Now, I did mention, well, you're going to talk about rest in this first segment. What does hockey have to do about it? Well, there's one thing I want to bring to the table, but I might have to table that given time for next week. Uh, And that is about, yes, the hot topic of shootouts. And I don't mean hot topic that it's the hot topic in the world of sports. It's been a hot topic on this podcast for years. We've talked about it for years. And I wanted to yet again vent about how three-on-three should be continuous in overtime. But you know what? I may have to save that for another show. Because in the second segment, we do have the top shelf segment. Dane Hantrell will be joining yours truly to have the first top shelf segment since Top Shelf has been its own podcast that now obviously transitioned, just like in the pocket, to be its own segment on the Game Sports Podcast content that we upload Monday and Wednesdays. For previous editions of the game, as I said, you can check out on all audio platforms as well as 91. And we have a great special edition upload coming. A little bit of a delay on that. We apologize, but with James Sabolski, it's going to be a great episode. Now, due to time constraints, I want to make sure that I dive right into this first segment and get to these topics as quickly as I can, as I only have you for about seven minutes, seven to ten minutes here on this first segment. So I want to talk about consistency with refing in the National Hockey League in particular, and only the National Hockey League. Now, I'm not speaking about this as a Toronto Maple Leaf fan. I'm not speaking about this as a West Macaulay front. We all know how awful West Macaulay is as a ref. I'm so sorry. Despite if anyone disagrees or how entertaining he is, yes, a little bit of bias on that point because of Toronto, but because of a ref, he does feel like he, I feel anyways, that he has the power to dictate the outcome of a game. Now, fully going to tell you that I do not like bashing the refs or pointing fingers at refs. I'm a full supporter of refs. I'm in belief of standing behind them because especially when it comes to the minor hockey ranks as they devote their time and not get paid. But nonetheless, when they do get paid and they're at the professional level, we should try to have the best of officiating on the ice or on the field or on the court 
or umpiring on the diamond, whatever it may be. And I feel like the NHL is a little bit behind, but there are ways that they can improve it. It's from enticing at a young age from both a payment end, but a good athletic camp end. Yes, they do have camps. They do send them away for training, but I feel like the training could be a bit more in depth than a recent Research that I've looked into, there's a lot of basics studied. Uh, the follow-up trainings are from their leaders inside the community. I feel like there should be an all-around group involvement from all those in terms of Canada anyways, all the provinces, but if you're from the United States, dependent on your state. And what that means is that not just a leader or somebody that you're assigned to in your local community or somebody that is even from out of town, I think – Routine check-ins have to occur. I think growth at a young age has to occur. It's like trying out for a hockey team to grow up to be in the National Hockey League. You have to train. You have to get good at it. You have to make certain classes like they already have in place. But the training has to be a bit more strict. From my research that I've looked into, a few referees that I will remain nameless. And no, none from Sault Ste. Marie. If you're getting any ideas to some that you think that I know or that you know, nonetheless, Referee training needs to up the ante from the younger age and also make it more enticing to those. And truly, I think those who are ex-hockey players would make really good referees, in particular those who have played in the major junior levels and up in the, if they didn't make it further. I think because they played the game, the awareness of the game is there, that's a little bit of a step forward. It's just like those in the role of the media, those who have a name, who have played the game, they're the ones that get in front of the TV more quicker than some of the others. Nonetheless, the, the referee in the National Hockey League, that's what I need to get to here. The consistency is not there. What's a tripping call? What's a hooking call? Look, I do not know anymore. Everything seems to just be all over the map, especially, yes, and I'll say his name again, if you're Wes McCauley. But, and I'm not referring to anything of a particular game or point. Yes, I can look at Toronto last year against Florida when the, the defenseman of the Toronto Maple Leafs stick was held. Or I can look at the year even the year before that with Justin Hall's pick and roll, quote unquote, when John Tavares scored in game seven. Or you can look at other series as well. I'm not just pinpointing Toronto. And I'm also not calling out the refereeing from the recent Toronto-Vancouver game when there's instigator penalties because those were instigating penalties. But they were great if you're a Toronto team because it bonded them together. But I digress. Penalties in general, they are not consistent. The referees, with all the refs that you have on the ice, the referee in the game, officiating the game, calls, a lot of calls are missed. And yes, if you want me to look at another Toronto point, look at Marshawn to Lilligren. That is a penalty. I don't care if it's two guys going into the corner. Look where his stick is. Look where it's placed. It doesn't matter if you're battling. If I trip somebody in the corner and I'm battling and, they, and I got my stick in on the guy's skates and he skates away, but then he steps on my stick, that's a tripping call. I'm going to get called. There's got to be consistency on the ice, and I don't think that's occurring in the National Hockey League, and I think it's a big big effect on the game today. It's unfortunate the refs do play that. The stick, the whole, when you get into the, when you go on the ice, the refs have to be on the same page. Make partners or make sure they have plans before the game. I don't know the full details of what they do before the game in terms of professional refs, how they game plan a game or anything of such, but it's not as in-depth as you think. They should know how to officiate the game. They should be consistent with their calls and don't miss calls. You're in the corner. You're the ref in the corner. You're watching the play. You're watching around. You're having that awareness just like a player would. If you're officiator on the line, you're watching your area. You need to have a plan. And when you're getting paid the thousands plus that you are doing to ref, we do expect results that do not dictate the outcome of a game, which does occur, sadly, in a lot of games. And they are obviously most noticed in the high-profile games, such as playoff games. doesn't matter what league or what sport you're in. I'm not going to get into points, as I mentioned. I am just upset with the consistency around the game, in particular with hockey, with refereeing, from holding the stick, from tripping calls, and it needs to change. And as I said from the beginning, training is there. They have camps that are there, in particular with Ontario. But I think it could be stronger. I think it could be better. I think we can attract a bit more, uh, a bit more talent in terms of the refereeing to go around the good young talent that's potentially coming up. I've heard a lot of good reviews of young refs that are training in good programs. So great to that. That's a great start. But right now, with the ones that are professional, the ones that are going through it, that have been through it for a little bit, there's an opportunity there to really, really hone down on gaining consistency. That should be the goal of refereeing in sports is that consistency factor and making sure that refs are all on the same page instead of refs having their own agenda. I'm not going to pinpoint any that may or may do, but again, at the end of the day, consistency is the word of this segment that I will use when I talk about my refs point here. Get that. And maybe, just maybe, 
If we can get on the same page, it will kind of pull back the media. It will pull back the podcasters like me that are sitting here wondering what is a holding the stick call anymore? What is a trip call anymore? What is a holding call anymore? What can you do? What can't you do in the corner anymore? Look, when you're in the corner, you should be able to battle. You should be able to push. You should be able to shove. When you're in the corner, I want my stick to kind of hold you a little bit. But if I'm delaying your movement at any time and I trip you, if that's called previously in the game, that better be called now. And yes, the human element will not allow for that for the most part. But when refs are right there, which 99.9% of they are, they should be seeing that and should not be missing those calls. Again, no points to point. I'm not going to point fingers. I've already mentioned one ref. I won't do that. You all know what I'm saying. Let's get consistency. And I think it all starts with some great things to have in place, but there's opportunity for more growth. And let's finally get some stronger officiating on the ice and remove the ones that are there now and bring in some new ones or keep the ones that are strong on the ice more so than the other ones. If you don't understand what I'm saying, it's, it's what I'm saying is the other ones that aren't good, let them go. Or just have the ones that are better ref more games. End of story. Again, no names. I'm not here to bash refs. I'm a, I'm a supporter of referees. I just get annoyed with the consistency in games. And what really bothered me and how this triggered this topic was, yes, the, the instigator calls against Toronto at, when they were playing Vancouver. That's what triggered this topic. But that's not what triggered it, that specific incident, because those were all instigators. It's the tripping calls that's happened all year, as I mentioned, and those inconsistent holding, tripping, uh, and, and roughing calls and the calls that have been missed and inconsistent throughout the game that one thing's called and something else isn't. Next topic I'm going to get into, as I said, I'm already two minutes over, so make this very quick. The extra innings rule in baseball, Major League Baseball, that is. Two, there's a guy on second. Long story short, guy on second in extra innings. I don't think that should be the case. I think it should be a guy on first base. I wanted to save this topic for Connor Henderson, and maybe I'll try to remember to bring it up, which I hope Connor, uh, who is obviously a co-host with me on the Strike Zone segment of the Game Sports Podcast, why have a runner on second anymore? That was there with COVID. That was there with the bubble and everything. And, and yes, it does change the element of the extra innings. The game does go by quicker, okay? But what would be the big change to move the guy from second to first? Well, let me tell you. It does change the perspective of the pitcher. It does ease a little bit of pressure off the pitcher, which may be not what they want, but it does increase pressure on the catcher and on the infielders that are playing second and third base, or sorry, second and first base, rather. It allows them to be a bit more involved in those extra innings. Yes, the second baseman is involved in the extra innings, but more so the shortstop, obviously, in the third baseman. It allows the opportunity for those who are on first that they maybe they do have to steal from first to second. Now the catcher's a bit more involved. Instead of the guys stealing from second to third, which you won't see as often, often from first to second. So that element's there. The pitching pressure goes down a little bit. So it kind of takes away from the pitching, yes. But at the same time, it doesn't. Because you still have a guy on first who's got to look off. you got to maybe throw a pick off. Look, overall, it still will allow the opportunity for the extra innings to be faster. But at the same time, it will not change, uh, make the game as quick potentially, but it does add another element in the extra innings to bring into the game. Stealing from first to second is a different art than second to third. Uh, obviously speed, second to third is a little bit different. Uh, but again, still allows for the speed to be in place. And at the end of the day, what truly is the difference? So some of you may say, why do that? Why bring up that hot take? Why not? We saw this second base before. Someone leaves a bunt sacrifice bunt guy gets the third then you got a sack fly to end the game that's this that's the textbook way to win your infielders try to play in to stop the bunt but hey look if i'm if i'm a fast runner like if i'm Ichiro suzuki and i'm punting bunting the ball and i'm running the first you may not get me you may get the guy at third or you may get me at first but the guy's on third now you got one out and let's say shohei otani's coming up Pop fly, they got, nine times out of ten, show a hey, we'll get a pop fly or do the right thing to get the hit and the game's over if it's in the bottom half. Guys on first, lay a bunt, you got one out, now you got a guy on second. If I lay another bunt, now I got two out potentially or maybe the guys in the corners that can lead to a double play. You know, there's just a bit more elements that can occur in the game. So my hot take in the world of baseball, let's add a different take to the extra innings. Let's put a guy on first, then we do on second. 
I'm 15 minutes in here. I'm already five minutes over. I can't get into my other topic, which I did want to mention basketball and a little bit of a t- another not so hot take, but a passionate take here on the Game Sports Podcast about shootouts. We'll have to save that for future and talk about it yet again. I got to take my breather here in the first segment where yet again I talk about refereeing, mostly in the National Hockey League, and a little bit of the extra innings change suggestion in Major League Baseball. But as I said, I got to take a breather. Because Dane Hantrow is going to be coming on. He's going to be invading most of this segment. Definitely the meats and potatoes to talk about. Not only being our top shelf segment, but we're going to talk about the Edmonton Oilers. And a full disclaimer to you, when I am off air with Dane getting ready to open and do that pre-record, I am going to tell him to be a fan. I'm not just going to tell him to be a host. I want to hear him say we. I want to hear him say ah. I want or, or hear him say I, my apologies, about the Oilers because he is an Oiler fan. Every other outtake that you've heard with media or any post that you've seen or anything of such, it has been the media straight textbook and most of the responses. It is great to have a, somebody who's a co-host on a segment on a podcast that's going to give you the fan perspective. Maybe it'll be passionate. Maybe it won't be as electrifying as maybe I would get about Toronto. But you know what? Dane is going to keep it to the point. He is an Oilers fan. He is a passionate about it. He is upset about their start. So we are going to be talking about that. I want him to talk from a fan perspective. So if you hear those eyes and we's in there, but we, the Oilers, and I, the Oilers, Pull back those comments and let the man vent about the Oilers because a lot going on there. We'll also talk about the Hall of Fame candidates. And I'm going to also let Dane talk about that Joe Thornton story. Yes, if you heard last week's edition, I'll spoil it for you. If you haven't, pause now. Go to last week's edition, uh, well, the Wednesday edition, where I talked about following somebody into the bathroom. And yes, that was Joe Thornton. But did I or did I not follow? Tune into that and you'll have to hear Dane's comments on that as well as we continue here on the game segment two coming shortly that will be fully invaded by hockey in that second segment as dane joins me so make sure you don't go anywhere but grab your drink pause the upload audio or video wherever you are and get ready for some more hockey here more hockey content on the game sports podcast welcome back to the game sports podcast it is your host continuing to host you here this evening david mckeg jr and i am joined now as i mentioned in the previous segment by the one and only dane hantro dane my friend, I need to ask, how are you doing today? <laughs> I'm okay. I'm okay. We got a big game tonight. See how it goes, 8.30. New coach. We'll talk about that later. <laughs> if anyone needs to know. Sports Dave, have not been kind for the most part. Michigan's no. doing well. Big game. Going to be there in two weeks. Very oh, yeah, excited right. for that. So Positive. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. If anyone needs to be reminded, that, Dane Hantrow yeah. is a Edmonton Oilers fan. Uh, he's also an Atlanta Falcons fan. He's also a why am I drawing a blank? St. Louis Cardinals fan. And while well, he mentioned who he cheers for for college, obviously that's not the wor- worst of all scenarios. Um, am I missing anybody? Arsenal. Oh, geez. Arsenal. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I did forget Arsenal. I did. Now there are some positives. At the same time, some negatives. Uh, and we are going to be talking about, because this is the top shelf segment here on the Game Sports Podcast. And you do just have yours truly and Dane. Our usual contributors, Alex Parr, Brendan Brooks, or Justin Heichel are unable to join us. And we'd like to keep it. I wanted to keep this episode between Dane and myself, especially since it's about the Edmonton Oilers for a good chunk of it. Obviously, our top shelf segment used to be its own podcast, but like in the pocket, it is now transitioned uh, into its own segment within the Game Sports Podcast, as already alluded to in the first segment. This segment continues to be sponsored by Flawless Roofing Service Sale Incorporated, over 30 years in the business, protecting your investment, start from the top, and is powered, that being the Game Sports Podcast, by 91N, that's 91 Network. Now, here in this segment, Dane and I are for sure going to dive into the Edmonton Oilers. We're going to dive into the Hall of Fame candidates for 2024. And we're also going to talk about anything else hot in topics in terms of hockey that we can get to. Maybe we'll get into a little story that, well, I shared last week. But the first thing I want to share is kind of a random story with Dane. I sent him this on Instagram. There was, and not just the Hall of Fame candidates, there was... An uh, uploaded video by Spit and Chicklets, I'll give them credit, by this dog who can hit balls out of midair into an empty net. Now, I have a dog at home that Dane can attest to. His name is Blaze. He's great. He actually likes to hit volleyballs and soccer balls in the air. But to see this next level 
post by a dog hitting one-timers out of the air. He's better than most hand-eye coordination players that I have seen in quite a long time. This is a very impressive video. Danny, did you get a chance to watch this video? Yeah, I just I just watched it. And yeah, I would say the dog's hand-eye coordination is probably significantly better than mine at this point. So, <laughs> Can you play on the Oilers with Connor McDavid? Does he need a line mate? <laughs> uh, we'll, we'll take what we can get right now, man. <laughs> <laughs> I got to promote that video because I love dogs, okay? And obviously, the Game Sports Podcast uh, loves to be involved with local uh, here in Tuesday Saint Marie and all charities in terms of, uh, obviously, animal shelter, animal organizations such as Northern Critters Need. Dan and I actually fostered a dog together five years ago, and he's here to back that up. That did happen. And the dog is with a great owner. They've, all hope was lost with our dog, Kendrick, but he ended up finding an owner. So I had to share a nice little pet story. I think it's a heartwarming. This made my day. This made me look at my dog and say, Blaze, you can hit balls out of the air. I am putting a stick in your mouth and you're going to start hitting balls out of hockey balls out of midair into empty nets. That'd be even better. Now, Dane, I did promise um, that listeners last week that I would try to keep the story as short as I could when I talked about my hockey player following into the bathroom story i'm not going to claim who that was yet i'll let you tell the story briefly from your side but obviously last week was a great episode on wednesday myself and justin you could check that out the thumbnail was fire gotta give claps to hannah gotta she makes our thumbnails look fantastic dane there was a story that i shared last week that i quote unquote followed a former nhl player into the bathroom uh would you say that i purposely followed him into the bathroom or did I have probable cause to go to the bathroom and see this gentleman? <laughs> well, two things. I would say that you had mentioned that you did have to go pee. <laughs> the number one, uh, prior to like, you know, us watching, you know, Jumble Joe enter <laughs> the bathroom. So it was kind of, you know, it, it was just, it was destiny really. So, um, but yeah, I mean, you, I, I think it, like you had to go anyways. I mean, there's multiple other bathrooms <laughs> in the arena that we probably you could have utilized. But um, I mean, you you got to take your opportunities when they're there. So I, I mean, if you, I, I think regardless, if you, I, I mean, it would be awkward if you walked in there, went right by them, um, and then like you just like he couldn't hear you like you know hit the back of the ball there. And like you were just like he's just like knew that you just like walked in, <laughs> like he's like this guy's not even actually going or anything. He's just here to see. Like so, I'm, I'm glad you had to go. So like the, you know the the interaction wouldn't have been awkward between you two. But uh, how was it? Like uh, like what did you guys? I know like we br- touched on it briefly, but like yeah, what, what did you guys talk about? But like how how was the moment? Like what did it? honestly, like I shared last week, the moment was, it was sporadic. When I went in there, I went into the stall. He or sorry, he was the stall. I went to the urinal. And that was actually funny that you say about hitting the back of the back of the bowl or whatever. I made sure that the, the cake in the middle was getting hit. Okay, I ought to be straight and just shoot, shoot straight here because I didn't want him to think I was following him into the bathroom. But I will say I did have to pee, as Dane touched on. And if I got to go, I got to go. And Joe Thornton's in there. He's just the, the guy who was in there. Maybe he followed me. You know, that's uh, He heard me say and it made it trigger his mind. I don't know. But when I went in there, I went up playing stupid going to the, to the sink, pretending that I didn't see him at first when I walked in until I turned my head and then obviously if I saw him media pass on and all he's gonna know that I know who he is so I made eye contact oh Joe how's it going I didn't hey funny to see you in here I'd shake your hand right now but this is an odd place to shake hands and obviously he said no no yeah we don't have to shake hands in here but we talked about Sault Ste. Marie his travel we talked about his time he brought up how great of a town this is here in Sault Ste. Marie he went around to the local arenas he went to local stores uh, obviously, he was followed around with the mayor all day and obviously the owner of Northern Superior Brewing Company. But I asked him when he landed. He said he landed the night prior. He said he was getting his beard. He said he wanted to make sure his beard looks nice and clean. His beard did look clean. And he wanted to make sure he dressed nice and sharply. He's like, what do you think? And obviously, his suit. Oh, mm, very nice suit. Uh, and obviously, I feel like I've literally seen him wear that suit like when he was on the Leafs walking like you know like you know down the tunnel like into you know into the arena like i i'm almost a hundred percent like i don't 
I mean, I like I I don't want to take like away to the fact that like maybe he did go out of his way to buy a suit, like a red suit, just just for this, you know, greyhound colors. Retirement. But but yeah. I'm 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 almost positive that I've seen him wear that suit, but I could be wrong. But play back the yeah. video, we'll see. See that honestly, it was it was a great experience, and we just talked about uh, his. Um, say congratulations for his obviously his honor, and he was very calm of the suit. And I asked him. If he was going back to see him, he said, no, 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 I'm actually going to be going out tonight. I leave tomorrow morning uh, at the time. So he was a very nice guy. And then after maybe about a minute and a half conversation in there while we were drying our hands, uh, a son and some other adults walked into the bathroom. <laughs> I'm sure they were like, what's going on? Is he okay? <laughs> There's a guy that went in there. Uh, so, But everything was good. And uh, on his way out, I said, nice meeting. Yeah, we didn't shake. They shake hands. Obviously, we didn't share names. But it was just a general conversation. So I'm, I can openly say that was one of the only media guys that went in the bathroom with Joe. But I never didn't promote the podcast. I didn't promote my name. I didn't talk about the Leafs even. I literally just talked about him and had a casual conversation. And there's a reason why I did that because I said – even I said this last week. I am going to get Joe on this podcast. I promise you that. My goal is to get Joe on this podcast. And I want to be – I want to see if he remembers me being the guy – that he saw talking in the bathroom. You always remember that guy that you talk about in the bathroom. It's, it's a very, it's a very memorable setting, of course. Now, Joel Thornton, that story. Like I said, I want to give it a quick little promotion here again. Check out last week's episode if you want to hear even full, more in-depth story. I even went into some in-depth sharing about how Dane reacted in the media room when he first saw it, and that was pretty funny. But nonetheless, again, I got to say, for the second straight week, the Hounds did that right. Uh, and obviously for any OHL games, if you're in Sioux City, we definitely check out the Hounds. But the league is looking pretty competitive this year. It's looking pretty exciting. Uh, definitely, I, it's gonna, it's going to be a, a race for a lot of teams that uh, are the favorites, I think, to go down the uh, to the to the end to win the Memorial Cup. Uh, but nonetheless, will it come out of the OHL this year? I don't know about that. It might, uh, but only the ending will remain to be seen. We'll give you more coverage on the OHL. But again, wanted to talk about this Joe Thornton story one more time because it's still funny to talk about. We have to check out last week's episode, that being the Wednesday edition of the game, for more details. As I look down here, one thing we wanted to make sure that we talk about, and we're going to save the Oilers for last if everyone's wondering what we're talking about with the Oilers. got to save the best information for last, of course, when you have the Oilers analyst just on the other side of me over there. Hall of Fame candidates this year. So just to name them off, I like to say it's a pretty stacked class. Uh, Pavel Datsuk, Becca Rene, Shea Weber, missed a few, hold on, Ryan Miller, Ilya Kovalchuk, Patty Marlowe, are your candidates for 2024, as posted by TSN's Instagram page, just the on the in the afternoon of Monday, November the 13th. A uh, lot of a lot of big names here, Dane. Uh, definitely some guys that you know if you played NHL 2004 or you played NHL 08, uh, all the years above from 05 and up, especially with Datsuk there. There's there's a good crop of talent, obviously, from a goaltending perspective with Ryan Miller. <coughs> Patty Marlowe played over 1,700 games, just under 1,200 points in his career as well. Ilya Kovalchuk has been effective in the National Hockey League and in, in the KHL. Obviously, he didn't hit 1,000 games in the NHL. You know, I wonder if that hinders him from being one of the, I guess, successfuls over like a Datsuk, a Marlowe, or any of those other guys. But definitely a star-studded Hall of Fame class. Dane, who stands out to you out of this Hall of, uh, Hall of Fame class for the 2024? I'm just confused as to how Shea Weber been out of the league this long. <laughs> like, he hasn't been. He's been in the league, I mean, a couple he's... years after Dadsuk. Yeah, literally. Weber went out after the bubble, after Montreal lost. Yeah, I'm Tampa. sure there's a rhyme or reason. Okay, that makes sense. Um, I, I would say the guys that I, I like. I mean, Dad Suk for sure. And, like, if you're going to look at both the goalies, like, I think, oh, <laughs> it's tough, right? I, like, I mean, I think, Alex, won a cup. I think Alex McGillney still needs to get in. Like, there's still a couple guys that have just been – Looked past for for a while, but uh, yeah, bunch of good candidates. Like I like Marlow. I think like the games played, you have to look at. Um, it's in the league forever. I mean, he never got a Stanley Cup, but 
Well, he was hoping to get it in Toronto. It never happened. Yeah, well, yeah, so was Joe Thornton, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I like, yeah, you got, was it three in and then and then a uh, a builder or whatever? Yep. Okay. okay. Yep. All right, like Ryan Miller and Pekka Rene are both very, very good goaltenders. And, like, I don't know who I'm, like, who who's a better goaltender. I mean, Ryan Miller's numbers are better, but, like, only because he played more games, realistically. Am I? Is this a hot take for me to say that maybe Ilya Kovalchuk is not a Hall of Famer? Is that is that crazy for me to say? He's so good, but like I look and compare to Marlowe, the games played, not even close. If I look at him compared to Datsuk, that he has more goals. He's than the Datsuk. last guy put in right now out of the yeah out of the, out of the exactly. I almost feel like Datsuk, uh, Patty Marlowe, uh, and I don't not not Weber. Definitely not Weber, but it's going to be close between Miller and, and Pekka Rene, but I would probably go Ryan Miller over Rene. Um, I think there's a bit more international accolades too between with Miller. I believe he's obviously won the silver with the States. I don't think Pekka Rene's won a gold uh, with, with Finland. Obviously, Canada was too dominant at that point. So those are my three. I Datsuk, Datsuk. But Marlowe's got to be the first the first one in. Marlowe, those games played. Over Datsuk? Mm, Oh, only because of games played. Look at Dazuk's played 953 games. Marlowe's played 1,700. I mean, that's a that's a big stat. Marlowe also has more points. Yeah, but I'm not right. looking at like the numbers. Like you're not. I kind of went to that that's direction. Who did things in the NHL that <laughs> he invented I the mean, deep. He, he, invented he invented things. He invented <laughs> he invented moves. Literally the like, best deke of all time. Remember who's the net for that deke? For which one? His first one, Marty Turco. He also, he also did it to Pekka Another one in there. He did it to someone on Minnesota, I believe, as well. It might be Fernandez at the time. It might have been I think he did that week both three or four times. But <laughs> Pekka and, and Turco, I'm, I believe, were the first two. See, now Kovalchuk is definitely last. Weber might even be last over Kovalchuk, in my opinion. I don't think Weber... He... he I shouldn't say he's not Hall of Fame material. The guy did play a thousand games. I'm speaking about games that he's arguably one of. A couple cup finals. I yeah. mean, hardest shot there for a bit. <laughs> Definitely more does than he have, Does he have a Norris? That's a good question. I actually have no idea. We let we should Google search that while we say. Uh, but you got to admit, between Ryan Miller and Pecoretti, the Miller must have the favorite. Yeah, but Jay, Jay Weber has literally World Junior medals. Probably world championship medals, Olympic medals. That's a good point. I don't have Norris listed under under his accolades. Yeah. So, and again, Leslie nominated, nominated a couple times. Yeah, he was. He was actually. I would, nominated. I would bet everything. I that my my whole hockey IQ on that. You, you know who he lost to? Fun fact. This is just pulled up in stats. It's an obvious name. Detroit Red Wings legend. Lundstrom. Exactly. But Hall of Fame candidates, look, leave your comment below about who you think. I think Datsuk and Marlowe got to be the two. But mine's number one, obviously. Maybe Dane's is Datsuk over Marlowe. Nonetheless, those got to be the two that get in. I don't. And hot take, I don't think Weber or Kovalchuk are the guys. I, I, I really don't think they're the guys. I think in terms of goalies, going to look at Miller or, or Rene. But Miller seems like the odd, the odd decision there just in terms of games played again. Wins, he has a bit more wins as well. A little bit worse save percentage and a little less losses, but that comes when you play a bit more games. So I'm going to give the edge to Ryan Miller. Comment below on what you think. Now, I did have a fun topic I want to bring up, so maybe I'll save it for last if we have time. We only we don't have that much time. We usually allow for 20, 25 minutes in these second segments. This is Dave McKaig, Dan Hancho with the Top Shelf segment. So I want to give as much time as I can for Dane with the Edmonton Oilers because obviously they are – the hot topic in the National Hockey League the last couple days. Uh, Just to give everybody a quick, if you've missed every social media, if you've missed every news outlet or bought basically any podcasts, TikToks, the Edmonton Oilers fired Woodcroft, bringing in a new coach, someone who McDavid is familiar with. Obviously, Manson's out too. Their coaching staff, a little bit of a change. And... The interviews today, I sent one to Dane from Connor McDavid. Apparently, he was quite surprised, and he seems a little bit shaken. He does not seem like a happy guy. 
right now, obviously so. I don't think anybody should be happy in that Oilers locker room. As Dane mentioned at the beginning, the Oilers do play tonight. The date of this recording is Monday the 13th, as I would have touched on the beginning of the show. But the Oilers do play tonight. I'm already drawing a blank who they played. Dane mentioned it, but I am drawing a blank. The Islanders. They play the Islanders tonight. Um, and it's the debut of the new coach. Dane, look... There's a lot we can pick at here, okay? And there's a lot of things that a lot of podcasts and a lot of shows I've already talked about. So obviously there's going to be things that we probably pick at, but nobody's going to have more of a passionate opinion, I think, than you. If you listen to anybody in media or sports, anchors, you know, even the players are keeping it content. They have to go buy a storybook. But you know what podcasters get to do? We get to be a little bit more free with the way we feel about it. And you've been an Oilers fan since you can walk you know, the Oilers have obviously had some success in their organization from the 80s. And, and obviously they had a cup in the 90s as well. And, you know, the last time, you know, they made the cup finals, it was a tough way out. You know, we're still trying a way to get Andrew Ladd on this podcast. I guarantee you if we get Andrew Ladd, I'm getting Dane on that episode 150%. If you know, you know. Uh, but, Dane, this beginning of this year, I predicted – for the first last year, I did the same thing, but I predicted a all Canadian Cup final. Finally, Oilers and Leafs. This was the year. Look at it. The Oilers lost to Colorado a couple years ago, who ended up winning the Stanley Cup. And truthfully, if the Oilers didn't have Mike Smith in that, different series. Colorado was very good, but different series. Last year, they lose to the eventual Stanley Cup champions Y'all, as if well. If we had Mike Smith in that last year against Vegas, we might have won. Good point, I guess. Good point. <laughs> Vegas last year, different team. They go against Florida, and it's like they broke the barrier over the Panthers, right? It was like they figured it out. But the Oilers have lost for two straight years to the eventual Stanley Cup champions. Now, if you're a Toronto fan, can you relate? Yes, to a different way. Every team we lose to makes a cup final, but not every team that we made the cup final has won, except Tampa. The Oilers have had that effect <laughs> the last couple of years. Tough, tough West. I felt as top heavy a little bit between if you look at Dallas, Edmonton, Vegas, Colorado, right? I feel like those teams kind of separate themselves from the other teams. But the Edmonton Oilers, if you compare them over to the East, I think the East is so stacked, but it's because everyone is so equal to a certain degree. Everyone has their own niche, offense, goaltending, right? Everything's just kind of, that's how it is. With the West, I think is stronger though. I think there's a lot more mm, just bigger guys, stronger guys, but I digress. The Oilers, Dane, not looking so hot. Coaching changes. Let's start wherever you want to go. You lead us off. The, the, the Edmonton Oilers, Connor McDavid's not happy. They were surprised. New coach comes in. You take the floor. There's topics we can touch on here. Everything's wrong. Like, like the goaltending's bad. The mental mistakes are bad. The defense is bad. Dreisaitl McDavid are bad in terms of what they're capable of doing. The secondary scoring has been non-existent until I think last game, I think Dylan Holloway put a, put one away and Fogel, I, I, he's a up and down between, you know, second, first, third line, but uh, mainly a third line guy has a couple goals, but other than that, nothing from the bottom six. And, and it's just like, we come out first period, the other team doesn't touch the puck. You know, outshoot teams like 19 to 2 in the first period, and we're down one to nothing. Make a fucking save. I'm like, I'm I I'm <laughs> getting tired of blaming the Oilers defense. Like so many, so many of these goals of like are literally off the rush to like bonehead passes, not get in the puck to where it needs to be. Guy tries to make a move in the neutral zone, turnover, two-on-one, two-on-two, whatever. Shot in, shot rebound. Defender doesn't pick up the guy coming in hot, going for the rebound. It's just stupid shit like that that is, like, so easily, you know, mitigated by just thinking the game a little bit better, right? Yeah. And, like... Every time, like, you know, we're we're down or, like, we come out flying in the first period and then we're down a goal or sometimes even two, and it's like, how did that even happen? Like, <laughs> it, it's, it, and, like, it's so deflating to a team and then you're just playing catch-up and instead of, like, trying to, you know, go through, like, the flow of the actual game and just keep sticking to your game, 
you start, you know, trying to play catch up, which obviously just leads to more turnovers because you're trying to play that high offensive game. Sort of chipping away slowly. And yeah. And like Jack Campbell and Skinner have been brutal this year. <laughs> brutal. And like, the, like there was one game where Jack Campbell, I think like we all lit up that game. I don't know if it's a game that he let in seven goals. I can't remember. Cause I've like, it's just been a fog for me this year. Like I like it's, it's hard to watch. And the guy made, like, 10, like, you know, highlight of the night saves. Like, there could have just been a package for Jack Campbell making these saves. But he still let in, like, seven goals. And some of them were muffins. And I'm like, I don't know how you make the save. And then, like, you can't make, like, and, uh, it's frustrating. We need Darnell Nurse's contract needs to be... $3 $3 million less. He's too banged up. He can't be that mean Chris Pronger-esque, you know, in the corners. If you're going to go to the corners, you're going to get punished. Darnell Nurse doesn't punish people anymore. He used to. Yep. And he used to have that too. And he still, and like, he can still put up points. Like, he puts up 40 points, doesn't touch the power play, really. If he could get that meanness in his game, and, like, obviously he needs to mitigate turning the puck over right in the slot would be also very beneficial to the team's success. Um, but yeah, like he's not, yeah, he needs to be, I, I don't know. It's, it, well, I don't think we're ever going to see the the punishing Darnell Nurse that we've seen because I just think he's, the way his body is at this point in his career is just not going to allow him to be that guy, which is like, he's not worth $9 million if he can't be that guy. Chris Pronger? that guy. And I'm like, I'm not comparing them as far as, you know, what Chris Pronger brought to the game, but like they are similar players in that fashion where they both have some offense to their game, but also are like the meanest guys on the ice. And yeah, it's just Bouchard. Like there was a stat at one point where he was on pace to put up 111 points this year. Like, I don't know, like six games in the season. And then he was also, on pace to be minus 111 <laughs> at this point in the season. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, people don't like I, that stat. That's an important stat, though. It truly is, especially as a defenseman. They, well, forward, too. It's actually probably worse as a forward. Yeah, there, there's just not enough urgency in his game. Like, he gets the puck behind the net. Like, there's guys flying at him, and he's just like – like and, like, half the time, he, like, I mean, a little more than half the time, he makes the right play, but it's just – he freaks me out because he looks like he just he's not paying attention to what's like his surroundings are, which I mean are obvious in some circumstances as far as his defensive play goes. But yeah, it's been a disaster start this year. We're three nine and one. Couldn't be worse. We fired Woodcroft. Not a fan of that move at all. Obviously, McDavid said what he said today. He didn't lose the room. We were implementing a new system defensively because. Teams that have won the cup prior or have had success in the league, Vegas being one, playing a, a 4-1 system, I believe it's called. Um, down in the defensive zone, where basically you have a box, and then whoever guy is the closest to the puck chases the puck carrier around, trying to force him to make that pass, and then you try to anticipate where he makes the pass, turn over the puck, blah, blah, blah. I believe that's what it is. I mean, listeners, if that's uh, not true, well, call me out on it. Um, but, yeah, it's... We need to go on a roll here. I mean, I wanted to win a division title for us. In my life, we haven't won a division title. Never mind a Stanley Cup. We haven't won a division title. 1990, last division title. And it, that is out of the realm of possibility at this point. Vegas has like 20 points on us. <laughs> like 15 games into the season. Well, we're not 15 games in the season. We're only at uh, 13, but close enough. And yeah, it's 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 bad, Dave. It's bad. I mean, the Leafs aren't great this year. Not as, I mean, nowhere near as bad as the Oilers. But I'm, I still have hope. I mean, may, maybe maybe this is maybe this is what they need. Honestly, I feel if we don't win the Stanley Cup or at least go to the Cup final this year, that never mind Cup final. You have, to, you have something else to worry about right now. That's making the fucking playoffs. Just making the playoffs, which is still time. Yeah, but like, I, I, 
But I don't know what Ken Hall is thinking. It's not like it's not like teams are running away with like the division no. right now. No, no, no. And Ken Holland though made this decision. I don't know why I'm drawing a blank. Who was before? I think it was Dave Tippett before Woodcroft. If I remember correctly? I think it was Tippett. He Correct. fired. He fired Tippett, brought in Woodcroft, and it made a pretty, pretty media change. I remember the first couple games where you know, you saw wins, but. Not the chain, but then change and frequent winning started to happen. People started to buy in. I don't know if Ken Holland's looking at this from an, an, a perspective that maybe this change will be good because oh, he coached Connor McDavid, Chris Knobloch coached Connor McDavid, Neary. He coached, you know, I think Connor Brown and I believe one more guy. But anyway, he he coached these guys. Maybe this is what the change is going to be, right? He's going by trying to repeat what history was with Jay Woodcroft. But Jay Woodcroft had a pretty good success rate in Edmonton. He, he had a pretty pretty successful record. You know, I don't, I don't want to say his record's comparable to a Sheldon Keefe, but his winning percentage is pretty close if you look at the difference in numbers. Like, Keefe has more games, been there longer, duh. But if you look at per, winning percentage, it's pretty linear, pretty, pretty linear. It's like not exact. I think Keefe has a couple points up, but... The way that you don't – the one thing that I've learned in my career, and I don't know, I'm not a full-time podcaster. Obviously, I've been doing this for seven years, but my full-time job isn't something that involves, okay, <laughs> being involved in a position that helps support an organization. Let's just call it that. And, you know, sometimes the sake for making change, just to make change, isn't good. So my opinion is Fire and Warcraft is a – Stupid move. I'll just keep it not professional. Oh, Stupid. it's terrible. Terrible. I don't, you know I don't the think biggest, so. The biggest failure of the Connor McDavid era is in seven years, we have not found him a goalie. Fact. And there is a goalie that's waiting, not waiting in the wings, but available by trade. There's a couple options. My number one is Carter Hart. I've said that from the beginning of the season. I think Carter Hart be a great Oh, no. Fit. Let's go bigger. Let's, no, 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 no. Jeremy go. Swayman. I don't know. There's, no, there's one guy that is potentially we'd have to overpay significantly for him. Which John I'm Gibson. Need. No. It's my boy, bud. Carter <laughs> Carter I'm, I'd much rather have Carter. No, you see Soros. Oh. They got that okay. Askarov kid coming. He's lighting it up in the AHL right now. UC has one more year. Mm-hmm. I mean, I think they'd like to resign UC, but I'm like, Nashville's like in this weird place where like Yeah, I don't know what they are. That's like, another conversation. Like, what are yeah, they? <laughs> like you're not winning the cop. You're not trying to keep fans. Pick. They're trying to keep fans in the seats, I think. You know what I mean? Like, keep that interest in Nashville, it seems like. You know what I mean? Like, relevance. I mean, they got a good fan base, but I totally get that yes. in that kind of market, right? Like, you, you have a bad team for three, four years. You, you, <laughs> it starts, it starts, might be getting a little uh, empty. Not Arizona level, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't say empty. Ah, Mullet Arena's wild. <laughs> it's gross. I hate that fucking rink. But the I Oilers. Love, I love that rink. I love that rink. I will say, Woodcroft, Woodcroft, bad. We need a goalie. I, I mean, I, I, just, I, I, I don't. We can't. We can't just have Stuart Skinner be the guy. <laughs> He's a backup level right now. Future. Yeah. yeah. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Future. Future. But Jack, and this is the thing you signed. I'm gonna put. I'm gonna tell you what the blame is, and this is why things haven't changed there. And I don't like saying this too much because as a hockey fan growing up, and I know we're about six minutes over time here, but, you know, story of my life with this show. Um, Ken Holland, I had the opportunity to talk to uh, on the phone. No, not now. Hold your phone, everybody. Not recently. Uh, this is when he was with Detroit. A friend of mine got, in a, obviously, a, a crucial... A, 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 one of the original members of our sports podcast family, actually, is on a casual basis now, but was in an accident, and he's a Red Wings fan. And what I ended up doing is getting in touch with the marketing team in Detroit. And I said, I wanted to get some goodies for my friend because I'm going to surprise him for a trip. And and I ended up actually not talking to that marketing rep. Ken Holland called me because he heard about the story. And Ken Holland, I had about a 15-minute conversation with Ken Holland. This is when Mike Babcock joined the Toronto Maple Leafs as a coach. And... Well, that aged very well. Uh, but with Mike Babcock, I said, well, thanks. We had a conversation about getting goodies all set up, and we talked with Detroit a little bit, but he wanted to stick to the topic at hand. And he mentioned, I mentioned to him, thanks for Mike Babcock. And he said, don't worry, Detroit will be just fine without him. <laughs> but 
point of my story is Ken Holland. I'm, I'm a, I think he's a nice guy because I've talked to him. I feel like what he did for my friend, I have respect for him. I feel like he's a, you know, a, a hockey. He's done well in hockey. He's done his, he's been successful. But I'm going to say it right now. I think he needs to be held more accountable for what's going on in the ice. Yes, the players have not performed, but also the players on the ice aren't. It's not the right mix. I think they need help defensively. And net, that is the biggest problem. Save percentage and goals against will tell you. Then it goes goaltending. Or sorry, then it goes defense. Then it goes to the forwards. But if you have a good defensive core that can move the puck out of the zone, get speed, make David to speed to make David on the left side or right side of the ice, open up the ice for dry side all, you get back to that play. You get some more confidence on that blue line, some more t- – Bigger guys, they're not going to get this guy because he's from Calgary, but someone like a Nikita Zadorov or Chris Tanev, those type of guys that are going to shut down the play, that's would be a good fit there. But you got to start from the net out. And that goaltending situation they have right now, Stuart Skinner, I think he has potential to be something down the road, but he's a backup right now. And Jack Campbell, the overpaid. The accountability has to be on Ken Holland. Ken Holland, though, has another title beside his name. And I know Dave knows that title, but let me remind you, listeners, that other title is President of Hockey Operations. I can tell you from knowing people that played in the NHL that have done management, that is a very hard position to terminate somebody from. There's very limited people that can terminate from that position. It's called the board of directors. There's also VPs, EVPs. Yeah, there's some people behind the scenes you don't know and the owner, right? Those are the higher ups. Okay, and when you invest into a president of hockey operations, a very secure position, let's just say, okay? Let me give you an example. Brandon Shanahan in Toronto. Has there been success? Yes. Regular season. Any playoff success? Anyone want to answer? No, there has not until last year. Anyone who has the president of hockey operation name? Well, they made the playoffs second round. That's a, that's a bonus for Lee Fence. Okay, that's a fucking bonus. <laughs> Oilers have had success, though, is my point, which is why I think Ken Holland's a bit more leeway, but why wasn't that leeway provided for Jay Woodcroft? Coach always gets the blind of the blame, and it truly wasn't his fault. Ken Holland's the problem to a degree. Because something had and to change because something had to change, and Ken Holland's part of the old boys club. And like, I the fact that we hired Paul Coffey to be an assistant head coach, and like, I'm pretty sure like there's a point where we tried to hire him and he turned it down, like he didn't want it. And now we're like, like it's like, oh, you gotta, you gotta be like, you gotta be our assistant, like. It's a mess. I don't. I think it's a bad look. I think. I think. I think we needed. If we lost, like if we didn't string together like two, three wins in a row, or like even three. Like he won last game. Give him tonight. Give him the next game. String some together. See if there's actually some like you know change in the team's play. Like noticeably, I think honestly, just from ownership or you know whoever like. I mean, it would come from ownership that changes need to be made. And he told Ken Holland that. Ken Holland tried to make a trade. Don't think it happened. I think his next option was, I need to change the coach. Which I think is, I mean, who knows? Maybe we turn around on the Stanley Cup this year. But I think, you know, if we don't, and even if we make the playoffs, and we end up, you know, sneaking in the wild card and drawing Vegas and Colorado, or Colorado and losing in the first round. All There's a nothing. team that finished last that won the Stanley Cup recently. Not last. So they finished last. They finished last. They were last until the new year. After the new year, they made the playoffs. They were mid-level team going into the playoffs. Guess what happened? They won the Cup. You know what team that was? St. Louis Blues. Things can happen at any time, but it's hard to battle back in today's hey, It's not NHL. how you start. It's how you finish. Eh? That's, all, that's what they say. Yep. That's a lot of ways you can think of that. But... We obviously went a little extended here. I am glad that we talked about the Oilers. Now, I want to say the word we one more time because I'm going to remind listeners, obviously as co-hosts, we talk about teams directly, but I gave this, I call this yeah, the top shelf segment, but I wanted to give Dane the reins to speak as a fan instead of just a host of addition. So when he says we, he meant the Edmonton Oilers, if you had no idea. Okay, I know people like to pinpoint those things, but listen, as a Toronto fan, if I'm venting as a fan, and take my whole side off here. I'm using that term as well. They feel they have a they have a effect on our lives. Those teams that you chain that you cheer for, and Oilers fans look. Dane is pure Oilers fan, right thick and through. Okay, through and through everything. I can't relate 
I'm a Toronto fan outside of here. I can relate in different aspects, of course. Uh, but right now in oil country, there is a little bit of concern, rightfully so. There's still time to right the ship. But I think they did the wrong thing. I don't think Woodcroft was the right move. But we could be wrong. We've been wrong on the show, but we've been right more than we've been wrong. Yeah, that's cocky. But I don't think Woodcroft was the right move. I think Holland's a question that needs to be thrown out the door. Uh, and I think goaltending needs to be addressed immediately and then built from that out appropriately. And there's options to fix it. But we'll see what happens in oil country. New coach, Jack Campbell's in the American Hockey League. Not, doing, not looking so good down there either. Uh, there there's, a, there's a lot uh, of question marks. And it all starts with some of the hey, signings. Ken, Hall. Ken Holland made some signings that were very questionable. And Jack Campbell's one of them. I said that from the beginning. He's not a $5 million guy. The, every fan loves Sue, but he's not the guy. Be, built from the net out, and I think the Oilers moved on from Ken Holland to be a better asset. Where will Connor McDavid go when his contract's done? I'm just kidding. I'm not asking that question yet. That, I'm totally not even going there yet. But let me say, I know if I was Connor, and I'm sure Dane will agree, if things don't change this year or next year, what makes him want to stay? We hope... The loyalty that he presents as a Canadian is one reason why. And I hope, as even as a Leaf fan, I hope Connor does stay in Edmonton. Okay? I, I truly do. I, I, I love seeing that starting, ending type nonsense. I love it. I love seeing him in the West. I'd love to see McDavid against Toronto in the Cup Finals one day. I think that'd be a great story. Great for media. But also just for any Oilers fans out there, just so they know that their day is going okay as long as McDavid doesn't leave for another team. But let me tell you, is it a hot take to think that he might leave if the ship doesn't write this year or next year? No. <laughs> it's no. not a hot take. It's not, it's, no, it's not, it's, a not a, take. it's not a hot take. Yikes. Maybe I'm being just very pessimistic right now, but no, I don't think it's a hot take anymore. <laughs> Yikes. Dane, any final thoughts before we wrap up? We won't have time to do our fun topic. Just to let you know, I was going to actually do our fun topic about EA, or sorry, nope, EA Sports. NHL 24, I want to vent about 24, how much I think of a garbage game it is. Better not be expecting EA sponsors anytime soon. Uh, yeah, but going on me. Uh, but we will save that for a topic for when Alex Parr is here. As uh, I was watching an old clip today of NHL 12, and it was greater than NHL 24. Love it. But any final thoughts about the Edmonton Oilers before we wrap up our top shelf segments? Just, uh, just looking for a, a good effort tonight, you know. That's, uh, that's it. Um, a W would be a bonus. Um, a solid goaltending performance by Stewie. Um, back-to-back games. I mean, didn't have that many shots last game. I think he had eighteen shots, had seventeen saves. Um, so yeah, you know, just like, a, like, you know, you know what you rarely see as an Oilers fan is a game where a goalie has like 36 shots and has 35 saves. I would love that. I would love just, you know, actually, I don't want that. I, I, I you don't know, keep the shots low again. Maybe that's what we need to do. Block everything. Connor, get your face in front of that puck tonight. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> he lose does not ch- love Lose a chip. Lose a chip or two for love the boys. It. You know, that would rally the boys. Connor fucking takes a puck to the face <laughs> that he blocks. Loses a couple chebs. You want <laughs> to fuck? Are you want to you you be? You want to show leadership and fucking turn the, the turn the you know the season around here? Take one to the face like Doug Glatt and then score a goal with it. Oh, right off the face. Or blah, yeah, or block one, save one, whatever. And that's using your head. Ah, <laughs> oh, Dane, I feel for you, and I feel for all others fans. Questionable moves made by Ken Holland for sure. We will see what happens in the coming week, let alone couple weeks. In oil country, as Dan and I sit here supporting our Movembers. Yikes, already getting itchy on this end a little bit. This has been the Game Sports Podcast that you've been tuning into. We are a total of 15 minutes over in this segment. Wow, we can never stay on point, but that's fine because our limit is to keep the podcast under an hour, and we do do that. But nonetheless, it's been David McKeg with the Game Sports Podcast. This has been the second segment of the episode, the top shelf segment here on this Monday edition of the game. And this has been Dane Hancho joining yours truly, talking everything, the hot topic in hockey, but most notably about the team that he cheers for, the Edmonton Oilers. And we got a little fan perspective instead of just some analytics from a host of a podcast. 
Love that. That's that's the niche. That's the different quality that you get here on the game. Dane, thanks for coming on, my friend. And I wish you well uh, <laughs> mentally. Uh, and just I hope you can sleep more than six hours a night because of this team. I have nothing to say. I, I'm just – if it's bad in the first period, I'll probably just go to bed. ESHL is always waiting, my friend. <laughs> no, no, I'm just going to go to bed. <laughs> Again, this has been the Game Sports Podcast, powered by 91N. Also, this episode has been sponsored by Flawless Roofing Insurance Seal Incorporated. If you're on video, you see me pointing to the calendar. As I mentioned at the beginning of the podcast, Flawless Roofing, the owner is actually retiring. Congratulations. But there's still room for availability for you to get booked on, to get your free consultation, get your quotes, get your estimates, and get your work done before they sail off into the sunset, per se. Well, the owner right now. Again, hit like, follow, and subscribe on all the Game Sports podcast platforms and as well as 91N. That's the 91N, 91 Network YouTube channel where you can hear myself and all the boys of the game, but also Bitter Rivals podcast, Average Jocks podcast, but also if you're looking over the game's audio platforms, all the recent episodes, and I'm glad Dane was here today to second the bathroom story. It's been long awaited for that approval to say that I'm not just making up stories. I can't can't confirm that that did happen. (laughs) Love that. See? Great way to end the show. Thank Again, thank you to all the listeners for taking the time to join us here on today's show, the Game Sports Podcast. I'm here to remind you, keep your stick on the ice, swing your bats, catch your touchdowns, drain your threes, and shoot your shots. Booyah. <laughs>